Okay. Here we go. At the top of your notes where it says domain and range, write where the graph exists. It's where the graph exists. Okay. So you're just describing where can the graph happen or where is the graph happening. And you, it's a two-dimensional graph because you have an X, Y axis. So you can describe it from left to right or up and down. Where does the graph exist on the coordinate plane? Yay. Okay. To do that, we need to do some um, interval notation. Okay. So, for example, the first one says X is... Is less than one, right? Yeah. So if x is less than one, it's everything from negative infinity up to one. Now the question is, does it include one? No, no it does not. So here's the deal: if you if it's not included in the range, it's parentheses. If it is included, then it's a hard bracket. For example, like a bracket is like a solid answer, so it's a solution, kind of like a solid line. Whereas parentheses is like a dashed line when you're graphing. Yay? So here we go. So to write this in interval notation, because this is just a this is just a range, to write this in interval notation, since x is less than one, the highest number it can be is one. It can be anything less than one, so anything from negative infinity up to one. Since x cannot go to infinity, should I use a parenthesis or a bracket on that side? Is a, oh, they cannot go. They cannot, yes, parentheses, right? Yeah, parentheses on that side. Can x be one? No, so parentheses on this side. Oh, right. Yeah. Imagine it this way. When you were doing the the domain and range stuff, right? It went like from negative infinity is x is one. So basically, I just cut out the middleman, cut out the x, just negative infinity, one. That's another way to describe it. Why are you talking about this, Miss Black? Because you'll see it again. If not in IB, you'll see it in college. They like to go from interval notation to set notation. Yeah, most likely. Because college, they give you like a well-rounded, you'll at least take college algebra. Okay? Which is algebra 2. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. So in this case, the second example, y is less than or equal to 2. Negative 2. So negative 2 is included, right? Okay. And since it's less than, it's everything from negative infinity up to negative 2. So negative infinity, is that included or not included? Not included. So parentheses. Yeah. Wait, okay. wait, 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 wait. Because a number can never get to infinity. A number can never get to infinity. Yeah, it's okay. For the infinity part. Yes. So uh, did you hear what Sherry was saying? Whenever you describe infinity, you always put parentheses next to infinities because x will never get to infinity. Okay? Okay. Z is between negative 5 and 1. Can it be negative 5 or 1? No. So again, just cut out the middle, man. It's negative 5 and 1. And instead of brackets, we just use parentheses like that. How would you like... Yeah, so when we're describing domain and range, or when you describe um, increasing, decreasing, we could have used, let me go to this one in your uh, homework, right? For example, in your homework, where do you go, where do you go, where do you go? Decreasing, decreasing. Yeah, let me, oh, yeah. All right, so for example, for your homework, you had a possible interval for, the, let's just say the first one right here. So x is less than 4, negative 4. You could have rewritten that as negative infinity to negative 4 and then use the brackets and the parentheses. For this one, since it's not equal to, it would just be parentheses, parentheses. Okay? So what you did last night could have been written in interval notation as well. Yeah? It's going to be okay. If you like the other way, it's okay. I'm just showing you this way. Yeah? Yes, love.
excellent, less than or greater than. So you have to think, you have to have a number line in your head. All the numbers that are less than 2 are going towards negative infinity. Right? Yeah. All right. So, Miss Abby, A is greater than or equal to 7. What would that be? Yeah. So it starts at 7 and it goes to infinity. Right, Jackson? So 7 infinity. It would be included. Is infinity included? No, so parentheses, like that. So you have to think number line. Where it, where would you shade on your number line like we did that first week? Yes, Jackson. Um, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Today, today I'm going to show you both ways. I want you to pick your favorite way. That's it. I'm showing you both ways. So I'm giving you two answers, but they're the same answer. Okay. So you don't have to show me both ways on your homework or your, your uh, sheet. Just give me one way to do it. Yay? Yes. Yeah, so think number line. Think number line. Seven is over here. Going to infinity would be to the right of that. Right? Yes, love. No, but know that they can throw either way at you. So you have to be able to read the mathish and translate it to English. Yay? Yeah? Okay. Okay. That's it. Okay, with question? Good? Okay. Okay, here we go. It's not bad. It's not bad. Okay, so where does the graph exist? Mm. You can describe it in two ways, the domain and the range. The domain describes all of the x values, and the range describes all of the y values. Domain and range, d, r, x, y, alphabetical order. D is x, r is y. Oh. Oh. I know, right? X values, y values, domain and range. I know. All right, here we go. You ready? Okay. Yeah, dude. Yeah. All right. Domain and range x, y values. Start, start with the x's. Here we go. It helps to map out your graph, right? Fra the graph goes from negative infinity to positive infinity for the x values. Yay. Is there an x value at every point of the graph? Yeah. There, if you follow the graph, just follow it up to the x values. There's always an x value, right? So if there's always going to be an x value, then the answer would be all real numbers. I know. So the domain would be all real numbers, okay? In interval notation, in interval notation, I'm telling, I'm going to give you two answers, the same answer. Interval notation would be negative infinity to positive infinity, like that. So either one, pick your favorite one for your answers today. Yay? Okay. For the range, for the range, no, because the number can never get to infinity. Oh, yeah. So that's why for infinity is always parentheses. Yay? Okay. So you ask yourself, self, is there a y value for every point of the graph? So if you're looking at the graph, just looking at, is there a y value for every point? Yeah. So let me do the x value one. So you're just looking up. There's always an x value for every point, right? So for the y value, there's always a y value for every point. So the answer is all real numbers. Yeah. Or negative infinity to positive infinity. Yeah, you're going to be really good at writing infinities. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Woo. Breathe. It's okay. Okay. Here we go. No. So increasing, decreasing is where is the graph going up and down? Domain and range is where does the graph exist? Right, that's why I put it on the right, the top of your paper. Where does the graph exist? Is what it's asking. Okay. What? Uh, wow. Okay. Let's do domain. Yeah. You sure? Ooh. Okay. Wait, Stop wrong. me if you remember. Gosh. All right. Wait. No. No. This graph continually goes up that way 
it continually goes up. So it keeps on increasing. So you ask yourself, sale? Does the graph always have an x axis? So if you look, yeah, an x an x coordinate. So if you look, there'll always be some point that has an x. So the domain will be all real numbers. AKA negative infinity to positive infinity. Yeah? Okay. Then you ask yourself, sell, does it always have a y value? No. The lowest point right here is the lowest y value. But I mean, right? Every other point, that's right, that's right. But the it had a minimum y value. So what you said. Y is greater than or equal to that's it. Because that's the lowest, that's the lowest point. There is no graph. The graph does not exist below negative five. Truth. Yes, love. So how do you know the solution? Ah, thank you. For greater than or equal to, you use it almost all the time unless you see an asymptote. And we'll get to asymptotes in a second. Okay? I'm talking about logarithmic and exponential. Yay? Okay. So this one, the range would be y is greater than or equal to negative 5. Or how can we write that interval notation? Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Negative five to infinity. Yes, that's it. Because it, it's always going up. So there's a y value as as you go up. There's just no y value before five, underneath negative five. <sighs> it's good. It's good. It's out. Oh man. Wait till it gets. This is the hard one. End behavior is the easy one. <laughs> yeah. Really? Okay. Okay. No, no. End behavior is coming after. You don't know yet. No, but like what we did oh. on Friday. Oh, well, okay. 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 All right. Domain. Remember that the graph continues, so it's always going wider and wider. That's what a parabola does. It just gets wider and wider until it goes up. So domain. All real numbers. There's always an X for domain. You'll always have some kind of X coordinate. Right? Right? Ooh. Yes. Yes. So for the domain, it's all reals. AKA negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. The ranch. Ooh. Yes. Okay, now. Remember that you're looking at the y value, not the x I mean, value, y. right? So it's y, very good. And notice that there's always a y value, like, to as it goes up and so on and so forth. So, Adrian, talk to me. Y is? Beautiful. Beautiful. How do you write that interval notation? infinity because it goes up. It goes up. Adrian, think about it this way. Right? If this is y, then you're going from zero to infinity this way. So that's how you write the bracket. From zero to if this was the y axis. Right? Yeah. So when you write it as interval notation, think of number line. Yeah? And that's how you know what order to put things in. Yay? Yes, love. For what? For both of them. For both of them. Because notice this one, right? For a domain, that's easy. It'll always go to the left, always go to the right. So there's always a y value. So do we agree that domain is all real numbers? Yes. Okay. So domain is all reals, aka negative infinity to infinity. Yay? Okay. The range. Yes, love. So, would it, for the first one, would it be like y? So you're asking yourself, 
is the graph for the first one? You're at not a negative three. You're at negative nine or negative eight, right? Okay. So here's the deal. Is there a graph below negative eight? Yeah, there is. So here's the deal. This is only a local maximum and a local minimum. It's not the absolute highest point and not the absolute lowest point. The graph continues below that point. So since there's more graph below that point, then it would just be, what's up? No, it would just be, no, neither, neither. See, okay, so here's the deal. So this one stops at negative nine, but there's more graph below negative nine. Yes, love. It's just all real numbers, right? So this one stops at four, that's right. But there's more graph above four. So it's not the highest point. It's not the lowest point. So this is just all reals. So negative infinity to positive infinity again. Okay. The last time we had all reals, all reals, was what family? Linear, this is what family? Cubic, linear is a degree of one, cubic is a degree of three. What's the uh, thing with one and three? They're odds. Odd functions are just all reals, all reals, because they'll always exist. Okay? Yeah, when you get to five, it's the same thing. Yeah. All right, whoa! This is not an odd. This is a degree of four, because it crosses in four spaces. All right. Valkis, what do you think? Can I do both? Yeah. Um, so I've got all real numbers. Is she right? Yes, here we go. For a domain, it's all reals. Negative infinity to positive infinity. Yay. And then the ring is um, negative 6.45, comma, infinity. Where did you get negative 6.45 from? Oh, right here? Okay, so you're like being really technical. You're being like really technical. Yeah. yeah. You want to do negative 6.9? Okay, like 7. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, no. So it's below. That's the lowest point. Yes, love. Yes. Yeah, um, it doesn't actually touch negative 7. Right, but we, like, we don't know like how close to negative 7 it got. It does look really close. If you did that, I would take it, because it looks like about negative 7. Yeah? Okay. All right, so let's take the first answer, since that's what uh, Jasmine said. So Jasmine says it's like right about, or as Abby said, it's about 6.9. Negative 6.9 is the smallest y value. So it would be y is greater than or equal to 6.9. If you gave me y is greater than negative 7, like Miss Isabel said, I would take it. If you're like a couple points off, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yay? What's that interval notation? Ah! Thank you. What's that interval notation? A bracket parentheses. Yeah, yeah, it's a good time. Oh, yeah. How many do we have to do? A million. All right. Uh, oh, we're not at the good stuff yet. Good. Okay, okay, okay. All right. What family? What family? I'm missing something. Oh, the quaternate. Quartic. Very good. Quartic. All together, what's the domain? All it is all real. It is all real. Just like last time. Yay? All right. Who's got the range? You got the range, yeah. Yes, love. Infinity zero infinity? No, 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 no. I got you. So you think oh from the zero. Yeah, no. No, let's just be zero. It's good. No, good question. Good question. All right. Who got the range? What is it? Zero to infinity. Exactly. For this 
For this, the absolute lowest point on the graph is at y is equal is. zero. So y is greater than or equal to zero. So zero to infinity. Wait, wait. Oh, oh, I got it backwards. I got it backwards. Sorry. Wow. There you go. So this is curve. I'm going to make it go ahead like that. There you go. Woo! Woo! All right. Who was asking that question? Will it never be all real numbers? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Oh, what? Okay. Family, what family, what family, what family, what family? It's which one? This is not a square root. This is logarithmic. How can you tell, Miss Abby? Shh. Go ahead. Very good. The tail is parallel to the y-axis. The question is, will it ever touch the y-axis? No. No, it will not. It will not. All right, so check this out. Check this out. Ready? Let's go with domain. Is there an X in every spot? So here's the O, right? The tail is touching, but it, it's not touching. It's coming closer, but not touching. So the closest it gets is zero, but will it ever hit zero? No. So from zero, is there any graph to the left? Heavens no. All the graph is to the right of that. All right. So the domain is X is greater than zero. Yeah, I know. This graph keeps going up slowly, but it is going up. It's not equal to because of the asymptote. Yeah, it's something you don't touch. Here we go. An asymptote is like a barrier, right? Like how you're sitting on that chair, but not. You're floating because your atoms are pushing on each other, so they'll never touch. Oh, that's what you talk about. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. You're actually the perfect, like... Like the perfect graph right now because yeah, you get closer and then just get closer to that and never touch, right? Okay. Interval, interval, interval. Interval? Oh, oh. I don't know, average. Zero to infinity. Yeah. Yes! And the paper and the car. Seven, so it's y is less than seven, so negative infinity to seven is the other way to write it. Right? Where does the graph exist? Oh, yeah. yeah? Okay. Here's Abby's favorite graph. Are we there? Yeah. What family? What family? Square root. Here's the thing. Right? Square root, there's a definite 
Square root is a definite endpoint. It's like a ray where it has a start, but it keeps going on somehow forever and ever. The definite endpoint is right here. You should not see a tail. That is the end of the graph. What coordinates are the ends of the graph? Yeah. 3, 1. Okay. So you ask yourself, sail? Where does the graph exist for the x's? So for the x's, the graph starts at 3, but then it continues on this way. Right? Greater than 4 equal to. Since it's a hard point, it's definitely greater than or equal to 3. So for the main, it's an actual like stopping point, so you include that point. Wait, what were, what's the last one greater than it? Like less for the asymptote? Yeah. How come it's not? Because it will never touch the asymptote. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for this one, you're going from three to infinity. I got that. All right. Then you ask yourself, self, what's the range? So you're looking, is there always a y value? And if not, like where is the end of the y value at? Why is that the 1? Is it greater than? Ah, oh, it's below the 1. Jay! Hey! So y is less than or equal to 1? Jay, what's that interval to check? I don't know. What? Anyway. I would write both down just so that way you will be familiar with it, or at least you can have something to study for for the SOL. Because, like I said earlier, they're going to show you both. They're going to show you both. I throw both at you, I should say. Yeah? Meh. All right. Here we go. Whoa! Whoa, all right. These graphs, these graphs are for your eyes only. I don't show this to regular Algebra 2. This is what's going to separate you from regular Algebra 2. Like this this part is going to separate you from regular Algebra 2. Wow. Right? Because regular Algebra 2 knows how to do everything else. These graphs, they don't know. When they jump spaces on a graph, you have to be careful about where they jump and how they jump. Repeat after me piecewise. Piecewise. It's called a piecewise graph, meaning you're piecing these graphs together. You have two separate graphs or more, and you're piecing them together. Yes, Miss Jasmine. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. All right, focus. There you go. Just deal with your issues. All right, here we go. Notice for the piecewise graph, right? For the piecewise graph, can x equal zero on the graph? Yes. Yes, it can. It can be zero on this graph, but it can't be zero on the second graph. So if you were to put the graphs together, the x, the x, yeah, the x, yeah, yeah. So the x can be zero for this graph. It can be, right? Even though there's a, an open circle over here, since it's taken care of down here, then x is a solution for this graph. As long as there's a closed circle for that point, then it's a solution. Okay? Yeah. Oh, no, for the x. Okay, so let's take a look at the domain, shall we? Okay. All right. So for the domain, we're asking ourselves, self, is there an x value for every graph? Over here, there is an x value for zero. When you jump to this graph, it does not equal to, but since those graphs are the same, are like put together, then yes, there is an x value for zero. So notice that there will always be an x value for this graph. So the domain is all around that problem. Like, how do you spell square root? Square root. Piecewise. Very good. Piecewise. It's a piecewise graph. Because you're putting pieces together. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because it's too 
much, and it's only like a couple of questions, if there is one. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah. So we like try to focus on factoring, factoring, factoring with them. Yeah. Okay. All right. For the range, get yourself. Is the is there always a y? What are you gonna say? Very good. Yeah. This is a straight line at negative two. Notice that um, after negative two, then it jumps up to here, right? So I'm not gonna have. Okay. I'm not gonna have. Start up again till one. Wait. So, so there's two pieces for this graph. Yeah, because it's counting by twos, right? Okay. So, for the first part of the graph, the y is just straight negative four. So y is equal to negative four is the first part, and which is the union. So it's at the same time. Y starts back up again at 1, right? Is it going to be greater than or less than 1? It's greater than. It's this open circle. It's not equal to. So it's going to be Y is greater than 1, like that. Perfect. Interval notation. Awesome. Since Y is just negative 4, it would just be negative 4. Union. Ready? 1. Infinity, because there's two parts to the graph, so they do put them together. That's just a Houston sign. Okay? Yay. For the negative 4, because it's just negative 4. You're thinking, you're thinking about the y values, not the x values. Ignore the fact that it keeps going sideways. Sideways is x. For the y, it just stays at negative 4. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Okay, here we go. Woo! Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Here we go. It's a three part piecewise piecewise graph. Okay. Okay. Here we go. For the x, the question is Does x exist at negative two? The answer is yes, it does. Right? There's another question Does the x exist at one? Yes, it does. So, Jasmine, what do you think? Does the x exist everywhere? Yeah. yeah. So the answer is, yeah, it's all real numbers. Again, so I mean, it's all real. They made it nice by showing light. Yeah. They made it very positive. Okay. Okay. The range is interesting. What do you think? There's a okay, Y right here. Like equals negative three. There's three. Five equals three. It's not equal to three. There is Y is three. Yeah, but then what about it? And then the next would be Y is Zero and the next one is y is okay. yeah yeah because for the open you're just talking about the x's because x would be a solution so it's y equals three right oh yeah it'd be equal to because it's three union y is zero union y is three like so yeah okay. yes love negative three yeah. Is that what you're going to say? Yep. Yes, girl. All right. Yeah. Yeah, when you have to put pieces together, just do the unions. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. We good? Yes, it was. Okay. All right. Here we go. That was...
That was part one. So let's take a break. Everyone stand up next to your chair. 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 Uh, all right, here we go. Do you know how you did? Okay, you know how you did your yoga when you did your arms right here? The end behavior is what are your arms doing? Are they pointing up? Yeah. Are they pointing down? Yeah. Right? That's it. Are they going straight across? Right? Just like exponential, are they going straight across? For end behavior, you're looking at the ends of the graph. That's it. You're telling me what's happening on the graph on the left or the right. Is it pointing up, pointing down? That's it. That's it. Okay, so that's why I finish up this. It's super easy. Here we go. End behavior. This is what you have to translate from mathish to English. Hi. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's going to be good. We got, no, like, as in speaking, you do not have to write a paper for me because I don't want to read it. Here we go. <laughs> She's your English teacher. There we go. Miss McLellan is awesome. Anyways. Here we go. Focus. Here we go. End behavior is what the graph does on the left side and on the right side. Right? Which uh, which uh, coordinate is the left right coordinate? Which one is that? Is it X or Y? It's the X. The X coordinates describe left and right. The Y coordinates describe up and down. Yay? You with me? Okay. So when you read it, it's going to tell you what's happening on the right or what's happening on the left. And then you just say it's going up or it's going down. Here's how you describe it. Okay. For your X coordinate, right, X can either go towards negative infinity, which is the left, or positive infinity, which is on the right. Okay, so left, right. This is for your x axis. Okay, your y axis, aka the f of x axis, is either going to point, your graph is either going to point up, which is positive infinity, or point down, which is negative infinity. Okay. So most of your answers for this is either going to be positive infinity or negative infinity. Okay? When you read it, positive infinity means to the right, negative infinity means to the left, or when x goes to, and then the y thing, just it's either pointing up or down. Sounds complicated. It's not. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. For end behavior, it helps to look at the ends. Okay, and just put an arrow, put an arrow on what's happening on the ends. Okay, so for the first one, as x goes to negative infinity, aka what's happening on the left or right? Left. What's happening on the left end point? It's pointing down. So you would say that it's pointing down, pointing down would be negative infinity. So f of x is pointing down, aka f of x goes to negative infinity. Okay? Okay. For the second one, as x goes to infinity, aka to the right, on the right side of the graph, it's pointing up, so it's infinity. Right? So it's left and then right. What's happening on the left? What's happening on the right? What do you think? Still not sold. All right, there we go. Whoa. Okay, again, arrows to show what's happening. As x goes to negative infinity, so the left side is over here, what's happening? It goes to infinity, it's going up. On the right side, negative infinity is pointing down. This is so easy. Thank you, Jesus. All right, here we go. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. And then, yes, I switched it on you on the around the world. I go with infinity and negative infinity. So you have to go right then left. Uh, right. Wait. You'll see. You'll see. All right. Here we go. As x goes to negative infinity, so we're looking on the left-hand side, is pointing 
it's positive infinity. It's pointing to infinity. That's right. And on the right side, it's also positive infinity. All right. Is anyone going to buy food? Okay, I never go. Here we go. Ready? Ah! Negative and negative. Very good. Negative infinity, negative infinity, because they're both pointing down. Notice for an even graph. Notice for an even graph, they'll both point the same way, so the end behavior should be the same. If it's an odd graph, they'll point opposites, you'll have opposites. Okay. Yay? Okay. On the left. Whoa. Right? Yeah. And on the right? Uh, blah. That's why I stuck this in with domain and range. Domain and range is really long, but it's super short. Yeah? Okay. For number six on the left? Negative. And on the right? Positive infinity. Done with life. Oh my goodness. All right, this one's tricky. This one's tricky. The left is easy. The left is easy. You just put an arrow there. Where is it going? Negative infinity. On the right, the question is, is it still going up? Yeah, it is. It's infinity. Yeah. Okay. Here is my favorite. Okay, well let's do the right because this one's obvious. On the right, it's going to positive infinity. Now, here we go. On the left, on the left, since there is an asymptote, it's getting closer and closer towards. It's, it's getting towards two. It never goes below two. So the answer to the left is it is not it's going down is true, but it'll never go below a certain point. So if it never goes below a certain point, then that certain point is your boundary. So for the left, it's gonna go to negative two. That's it. Technically no, but like from a visual standpoint. Right? It looks like it's getting parallel. It looks like it straightens out. Yeah, you're right. It's not parallel, technically. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Bring both sets of notes with you. Okay.